Hi guys! Today we're going to walk through the basics of doing a wine crate cake, which is super fun for so many events. Now, to keep the wine bottle, you need a real wine bottle of the shape that you want, and to keep it from rolling around, I find the best thing to do is just use a couple of balls of fondant and just wedge them against it, and that holds it. And the main thing to remember is to put a ton of cornstarch on the bottle that you've obviously cleaned and on the underside of the black fondant, really coat it well, really well, because it's a bummer to let something dry for two days and then have to break it trying to get it off the bottle. So use tons and tons of cornstarch and then also jiggle it when it's all done and maybe jiggle it as it's drying just to make sure it's not sticking. So just lay the fondant over, make it quite thin, otherwise the neck looks thick and it doesn't look real. So it has to be pretty thin. And just form it carefully, paying close attention to the neck because sometimes it's not all the way up against the bottle. So just smooth it on there. And then take your scalpel and carefully run it along about halfway down the sides of the bottle to trim the fondant off. For the label, just print off a copy of the label that you'd like to use and roll out some fondant as thinly as possible. And using your Dresden tool, just run over all the lines that you would like to impress. So I just kind of, obviously the outlines and the, whatever artwork that you'd like to replicate to keep at the right scale. And to paint, just thin down your gel colors with Everclear. And unfortunately, my phone ran out of battery when I was halfway through painting this label. So um, at least you can see how I got started and kind of get the idea.
for the panels for the wine crate part, just roll out some fondant and then transfer it over to a half sheet board. That way, once you cut it, you don't have to move the panel, which tends to distort it. Size wise, I like to do the cake about six inches wide and about 15 inches long. I feel like that's about the right size for the bottle, but you need to cut the panels a little bit longer than the cake itself because you're going to trim them when you're applying the panels. For the height, you do want that to be exact. You don't want to trim that after it's on the cake. So once your cake's all frosted, measure the height and then add a quarter to a half an inch, I'd say a quarter, because you just kind of want it jutting, you want the panel jutting up over the cake just a little bit because you're gonna fill it in with that Excelsior, the fake fondant Excelsior. A quilting ruler is the A number one best tool to use for this. Again, with your handy Dresden tool, just mark sort of irregular lines for wood grain. So if the cake is for a birthday or an anniversary, I think a date on the side of the crate is a perfect touch. So just print off the numbers in the size that you want to do in the font that you want to do and lay it over the side of the crate, being careful to center it as much as you can, run it over with a Dresden tool, remove the paper and just sort of carefully deepen the lines so it looks like it's carved in to the wood. Next, repeat the process for cutting the panels for the ends of the crate. Once they're cut, you'll want to let them sit out on the counter until they set up a little bit. And that takes, you know, a range of time depending on how humid your room is basically. I usually let them sit half an hour to an hour and all you want is to be able to pick them up without them bending or distorting. So once they're set up enough that you can handle them easily, spread some buttercream. You wanna start with the back of the cake, so the long end that does not have the date in it. Spread some buttercream along and just press that panel up against the cake and use your fondant smoother to make sure that it's adhered all the way. Then slowly and carefully using your scalpel or a really sharp and thin bladed paring knife, trim the ends off. Repeat with the ends, but line them up so you only have to trim one side, one end. and finish by applying the front panel. You want that to be the last one because then you can trim it so that there's no trim, there's no seam on the front.
The next step is painting it, just with gel colors thinned down with Everclear. Um, I like to add a little corn syrup because it makes it very shiny and sort of looks like shellacked wood, which I kind of like. For the Excelsior, just color some fondant, a very, very light straw color, and roll it out as thinly as you possibly can, and then use a pastry cutter to cut out strips pretty thin as well. And just, it takes a little bit of patience, but the effect is so cool, it's definitely worth it in the end. I find the best time to glaze the bottle is once it's on top of the cake. So just mix half and half Everclear and corn syrup and brush it onto the bottle um, around the label and around the foil, unless you want the foil to be shiny, but I think it looks better matte. And as then you are finished with each little batch of Excelsior as you cut them, uh, just take them and carefully arrange them. The glaze makes the bottle really sticky even once it's dry, so um, just carefully just try to avoid the bottle. Um, and then if any does stick, you can just kind of push it down with the Dresden tool. And that's it. You've got a fantastic cake that will thrill the recipient. I hope that was helpful, you guys. Thanks for watching.